More information has come out about World of RuneScape. Previously, the developer has released a 45, roughly 45 minute long video of all of the updates. Most of it is going through the tutorial island as well as showcasing a lot of the skills. I've condensed down what is shown in the video. You're going to see a lot of the background footage. Again, apologies, the footage that he has provided is a little bit low resolution, so it's going to look a little bit fuzzy. I'm also going to be cutting it down so you can see the main parts of the video with a little bit leftover after I'm done you know telling you about the stuff just so you can see a little bit more at the end anyway so first things first a couple of the changes that are going into development the combat is going to get an overhaul to be more similar to OSRS's style as opposed to a mix of OSRS or RuneScape 3 or World of Warcraft so expect it to be more old school RuneScape as opposed to any of the others tutorial island is pretty much all finished it looks like he went through it earlier and besides you know a few fixes here and there a few tweaks and nitpicks it pretty much is functional and ready to go now the biggest thing and this is i think the biggest like thing that's preventing it from coming out into alpha this month or at least last month as it was previously you know mentioned is that the developer is planning to do an you know a complete core change so right now he's doing a 3.3.5 i believe azeroth core i believe that's what he's doing but he said he's going to be changing cores to what i don't really know he did not provide the name of what core he is changing but that means he has stopped development on core stuff and is instead just mapping out the world so it, he's at least doing something in the meantime while he's figuring out the transfer over which is fine at least you know it's still getting some production down but we'll get into that mapping stuff in a moment first things first tutorial island he went through it and he was showing off a bunch of the various skills and how they will work fishing tree cutting and several other skills that function pretty much the same way will work off a tick system Every five ticks will give you a chance to loot whatever the item is, being food, being fish, or chopping a tree, and you know, the like. Fire making has been changed slightly, so when you put down a fire, you can click on it to gain a buff that will slightly increase your HP. This will make fire making more useful and valuable, and the higher logs that you burn, the more HP it will give you in a buff. Similar to how fires uh, give you a spirit bonus in, in World of Warcraft. From the footage he showed, it looks like looting is working the exact same way as World of Warcraft, where when the creature dies, it does the little, you know, sparkle sparkle, you go click on it, and then it gives you whatever the loot is. So I don't think it's going to have a full drop loot where it just drops on the floor, at least not for right now. What was interesting is that he showcased that on the mini-map, yes you will see various things like quest, but you will be able to see the little red dots that show you where a pickup, like a pickup item is in the world, such as, you know, a leather boot just laying around or a knife just laying around that you can go and pick up from, you know, a table or a chair or whatever. So it will show up on the mini-map, which is the same as RuneScape, but he managed to get it to work in World of Warcraft's engine, which is nice. Pickpocket is another skill that is seeming to be fully functional as he showcased it off in front of Lumbridge, and he was able to pickpocket the NPC several times before it finally clocked him over the head. During the alpha, which has no time frame as of right now, though he says it will be relatively soon, probably in the next month or two, you know, after he's done with the core change, the alpha will not contain three of the skills that are typically in the game, or at least will be there for launch, which will include farming due to te technical reasons, you know, of him trying to figure out how it will work, construction skill, also the same thing, just figuring out how it will work in game, and the hunter skill, which is a little bit of both with some of the technical aspects but also with the things he did manage to figure out it was creating too much clutter in the free realm because if you did not watch any of my other videos he is trying to implement as much as he can in the free world for the testing purposes even if the items or crafting did not belong in the free world to begin with though after it's all tested and released it will be reverted back to how it originally was for an example a redwood tree 
3, which is definitely not in their free world, well, there will be one or two there just for testing purposes and then removed later once it, the location that they're found in the members world is released. On that note, he did add Chaos Druids for Herb Lord training for, you know, temporarily until he's able to release Taverly and all these other areas with NPCs to give you the herbs for Herb Lore training. After that, he flew around the map a little bit, showcasing off some of the mapping that he's been doing, meanwhile, while he's waiting for the core change. So, all of these areas are as follows. They are pretty much almost, if not complete, in terms of placing items. There may be some tweaking, some of it may be unfinished, but there are certainly, at the moment, no questing or anything to do there until he is finished. All of these areas are going to be locked off, you cannot access them during the alpha and possibly the beta these will all be released as they're ready he said possibly Taverly might be ready for the beta or release, but the rest of it will not be until much later. Anyway, the dig site is one area, which utilizes a dungeon from the Battle for Azeroth expansion. I don't quite remember the name of the dungeon, I've only really been to it once. Uh, he's done Taverly, the Witch's Hut, Birthrope, Death Plateau, including all of the Trollheim area, some of the Fremnik area, the God Wars entrance, White Wolf Mountain, Entranta, Catherby, Camelot, Sears Village, the Fishing Guild, the Ranging Guild, Legends Guild, and some parts of Ardone. Another thing he mentioned in this video that a lot of people were not sure about is that he is not adding the weight system. So the weight system was, it kind of controlled how fast you can run or how fast you could recover your stamina after running, as well as various, you know, if you're trying to jump over something for the agility skill, it affected a lot of different things in RuneScape. However, that will not be present in this variation. And the last thing to cover in this video is that he talked about two things primarily two skills that may or may not be completely different from how RuneScape functioned, and he's looking for feedback on what you all think on how he should go about this. The first one is construction. He says he doesn't really want to go into the player housing system as it is in RuneScape, and instead he wants to make a public house where, depending on your construction skill, you can access different areas of the house in order to create, you know, a table, a chair, to level up and skill up your construction skill, as well as fixing up, building, and doing all this stuff for the public house for everyone to share. I personally don't mind it as a, you know, a standalone idea, just so people can be social and, you know, level up their construction skill together with other people, but at the same time, a player house is part of, like, just part of RuneScape, and even though he says that a lot of the amenities that provide that are provided in the player house such as you know portals and you know the, there's you can get your own personal church and all that kind of stuff a lot of it is going to be would be rather i would say available in this player you know building that other people can share so it's not like you will be losing anything in terms of gameplay but i feel like you would be losing something in terms of just you know player personal progression because you know the house is just something you do on the side yes it's kind of solo content but you can invite other people to the house doesn't anyone remember house parties so i don't think he should forsake player housing if if he can you know figure out a way to do it i'm pretty sure there is a way to do it because a lot of other private servers have found like many ways to implement it in one fashion or another so i think there are ways to implement it and if he you know finds the time i'm not saying i'm perfectly okay with him adding it later but figure out a way to do it because it's part of you know it's just part of runescape at this point to have your little player house even if it's just cosmetic you don't even need the amenities so i really think it should be possible to have your player house and have the public space as well. But that's just my thoughts. Please let me know what you think about that below. And the last thing is the dungeoneering skill, which you would be more familiar with in RuneScape 3. Now, I did not get to explore dungeoneering in RuneScape 3, because I believe it was a member skill, but apparently it's not. But either way, I never got to test it when I played RuneScape 3. So, he says that people imagined it would be similar to 
World of Warcraft dungeons where at a certain level, which in this case would be a certain dungeoneering level, you would be able to access different gauntlet style dungeons. In this case, they would be gauntlet style solo dungeons for you as an individual, though it is a possible chance to allow for grouping so it could be done with multiple players. But it would essentially function the exact same way as a, you know, vanilla WoW dungeon or even a retail WoW dungeon where at level, let's say, 30 or 40 or 50, you can access a dungeon with, you know, a linear path or, I don't know, it might be non-linear, but as you do the dungeon and do the bosses, then you can get unique rewards from there. So, uh, I would have to see how it plays out. It sounds okay enough. The reason why I'm kind of timid on it is because one of the, you know, benefits of RuneScape is that pretty much every- old school RuneScape, mind you, because RuneScape 3 is kind of fucking weird about this, but old school RuneScape has this thing where a dungeon is- technically out in the world it's not instance you're just kind of going under the map into like an area but it's still open so other players can just kind of run in and you could see other players in the exact same dungeons provided they're not instance for a quest or i mean even then usually quests have it open it's very rare it's very rare that they instance you off in the old school version and then having all the levels of difficulty in one, like one dungeon itself could have level 30 to start off with in the first little area and then as you walk to the second room it can be full of level 80s and then the third room would be full of level 125s so there's already power scaling there in the dungeons that are already existing you can it's out to the open for people to you know just see each other grinding or just kind of running through to get to the area that they want to get to so i, I really think think that it technically already exists and you could just you know do it that way but again if it's just like a side thing i'm not really too hesitant on it uh it, it's just you know that's just gonna be a skill that I, everyone's gonna feel like they have to level up to level up all the skills and at that point it's like i kind of want that more open rather than instanced dungeon vibe which i don't know that's that's just my feel i'm kind of 50 50 on it i would have to see how it plays out but anyway that's going to be the end of this video if you would like more information on world of runescape as it comes out with information videos gameplay because i will be in the closed alpha when it does release please like subscribe i do other coverage of different private servers such as Azeroth at War, Project Deepak, I just released a Turtle WoW video, Stormforged, which you're going to see more gameplay videos of that pretty soon, and I will see you next time.